I would like you to see today my Honda race replica. It's actually a 550 Honda, CB550, built mid 1970s. I had this idea of building a race replica to mimic something that Mike Howard would have rode back in the late 60s. It's a mimic of the RC181, which is a 500 Honda. I built this with the intention of going to the Isle of Man to do what I wanted to always do, a lap of the island. <laughs> big experience to actually build something and actually fulfill that dream really. Riding around the circuit you try and concentrate on what you're doing and I was hoping to go as fast as I possibly could within my limits. I'm not a racer and never will be. I was going probably quicker than I wanted to because I didn't know really what this bike was going to do. It all sort of happened and finished very, very quickly and you realise afterwards that you've done it. Coming back and the last little sprint to the line to come into the paddock and the sun greeted me and it was like, I've just done a lap of the Isle of Man. And uh, yeah, I should always remember it. Funny thing, makes some people laugh. I thought I've got to remember this somehow. Whether it's a good idea or not, there it is. 2012, Manx GP. This bike was found in a shed. I was told it was off the road for some years and if I wanted it, I could have it. So that was my start point. It was just literally an old Honda 550 seized up. So what have we done to the engine? Completely stripped on the bench. So everything's out of the engine. You've got the crank out, the rods out and the rods were corroded. They were rusty. So they went into a cabinet and they were blasted. There's nowhere in the bearings or anything. So it was kept standard. The bores were okay but bike had been standing, had locked up on a few of the pistons. So that was all honed out, standard. It's, it's all standard in there. It's a really good engine. New timing chain, new adjuster, all those sort of bits, new rings, obviously. <laughs> new clutch springs now and, and plates. They're standard carburetors. We've left them standard. There's no air box. It's just now got bell mouths with gauzes on the back to stop any debris. I know the originals wouldn't have that, but it's just peace of mind. There's a breather here which goes into a tin, it looks period. The cases have been cut down, the starter motor has been taken off, the kickstart mechanism that's all taken away. This case is roughly where the starter motor would have been in. I've cut this case away to make it look a bit more racy. And up the back here, this is where the drive would have been for the starter motor. We tried to mimic a bit of a race engine. It's not, and I'm not trying to fool anyone, it's not. With the 550 or any of the four-cylinder engines, there is normally extension here where the alternator would be. So we've done away with the alternator. I've actually cut the end of the crankshaft off. There's no stator. Probably should have left that because you can't put a timing disc on there to time it. You can put your, you can take a plug out and you put a depth gauge in there or you can do it that way. But it would have been quite handy to have had a timing disc on there. A lot of people just will leave a little hole there and at the end of the tape of the crank to sit, sit through there. It wouldn't touch the ferry, but I cut it off. Probably a mistake. So we run this now on a dead loss battery. So it's electronic ignition, dead loss. So we just have a switch up the top here. When we put that on, we have a green light. It tells me my ignition's on. All the castings, all the cases have been through a bee blaster and people say that's risky but there was nothing in those cases and afterwards they were put through a pressure washer then back through a kerosene washer then blown out with an airline and made absolutely sure there's no sand in there. It mimics the finish of a race bike because it's got that dull like sand cast finish. So basically run through the engine, built it back up, put it back in the frame. The pipes, the down pipes, and the megaphones, they're all made. You can actually, to be honest with you, make your own. 
and I have got something here and anyone's watching this easy way of doing it. My cousin made this and this is like a, a dummy silencer. So what you would do you get your 16 gauge steel and you'd roll it round here. If you've got a set of rollers you can start off with something round but then you're obviously going to get your taper. So you draw it, you put steel underneath and you get it round, you get it tight, tack weld it, uh, say four or five places. And then you've got that nice and tight and then you can cut off the waste what you can also do, because it's going to be curled on the inside, you can put your grinder right down the middle of it and don't take those, those, those tack welds out. You just clean the whole thing up and just put it away. And you can just make your little tiny reverse cone on the end, which is quite easy to do. This is a bit longer. Well, I say it's longer. It probably isn't because you could probably, you're going to cut this and get that rake back. So that really is what you're going to mimic. And if you can make it yourself, you know, it's going to save you a lot of money. What makes these bikes is the rear appearance. When you see these four megaphones shooting out the back and you're following the bike with these pipes, the noise is awesome, absolutely awesome. There's no baffles in there, it's completely straight through. Things like the filler plug here that's wired off, Obviously in racing or around a track that is like a requirement now. If you parade these bikes like in a race series they expect you to have a, a belly pan underneath and now a catch tray. I don't have one on here because I don't do it seriously. So we stripped it all down and you always start off with delugging the frame, all the bits you don't want, all that was ground off. With the back of the frame I have left these two extensions on the frame. When you put it in the trailer or van you can use this for anchor points for your straps. The forks are all standard, the staunchions have been re-hard chromed, new seals. The back end, the swing arm is, is standard, we have chopped it down slightly, there's normally a bit more metal there and we've ground that away. When you build these you want to save as much weight as possible so every single spacer, if it's steel, replace it, make it aluminium. So literally all the mounts from spacing off the brackets for the fairing to the engine mounts to the back wheel, spindle uh, spacers, everything's made out of aluminium. Around here, this is home brew, and, and I know people are going to say, why don't you buy your own rear sets? The thing about this, you can make it how you want it, rather than buying something that's already been made and you adapt it to what you want. This is made from scratch, and like all the pegs, the way they come off. If I damage that, I can replace it. It's not going to cost me anything. If I was to bend this bike and it's all expensive components, it would cost me quite a bit of money to put back together. And I'd build it to take it around a track. <laughs> Having rear sets, it's got to come in the right position. There's a bracket behind which we can bolt to. So that's a bit of a challenge because you have to weld a bracket onto the frame which is behind this aluminium bracket you'll see here. So rose joints, linkage, some steel. Mimic these parts in that case, spun some bits up on the lathe. And all the spacers, I made those on the lathe. So it was getting this linkage to work properly with the foot. Being Honda 550, it wouldn't have had this brake. But I was lucky enough to pick up the Black Bomber brake. As you can see, yeah, it's a nice looking brake. So this is a brake assembly. We've used the original brake. We just turn the arm around the other way. Rod right over the top, these are flange rims, aluminium rims and stainless steel spokes. Tyres, these are the Michelin and I think they're M45s. Battery, we've, we've mounted the battery in here. Keep that out the way as much as possible. I've got electronic ignition. So we have a module inside here. We've got the core pack and the rest of the electrics up underneath here. That is what we power this up with, new coils and the ignition system, which does away with the points and condenser. And I say we run it on a dead loss battery. We run it for a fuse. So as soon as I put the power on, that will stay up. One of the challenges is really is getting everything right. It's got to look similar to what the real thing would look like. Now, I didn't go out and buy anything for this that I didn't really need to buy. I tried to make it all myself. That was the thing. It was building the bike in a shed to the track. That was the idea. We had this seat to start with, five glass seat, picked up a, just a base, then had it covered. It's got a nice tank on here. But what was on here first, and I'll just make a reference to it, fiberglass. Now, 
it was all right in the day when you didn't have ethanol and petrol. What that does, that fuel, it breaks down the fiberglass and it will start coming through from the inside to the outside. So like I say, the tank was originally fiberglass. We've now got an aluminium tank which fits like the original. We do have a short strap at the back to keep it on the frame. Sits on rubbers, and the rubbers are what you find under something like a Norbster or a Triton. The rear shocks, they're slightly extended. We found the first time out at Jerby, going into a corner, it bottomed out, the fairing was close to the ground. It just didn't feel quite right. These are slightly longer. The mud guard is just a blade mud guard, fiberglass cheap race fitment. We have clip-ons. Because we've got limited log, we have to obviously put the stops in here. We weld in a, a bracket in the front so the handlebars don't clout out the tank. There's an extension at the front here for the fairing. We use the original rev counter, which is cable driven. A lot of people use an electronic one, but I wanted to use as much of the, the bike as possible. Didn't want to spend too much money on this. I didn't have it to spend. <laughs> To get a slightly racy appearance, this is all original. So the headstock here, we will cut this down and where the handlebar mounts would be, that's all been chopped back. Now, these bikes never had a steering damper. It hasn't got one now, but it's the race bike would have done. But as a 550 road bike, it would never have done. So we mock up the steering damper knob. Obviously we make these supports for the fairing and that's welded onto the front of the, the frame itself. Gearing, we changed this, we geared it up after the first time on the Isle of Man. When the fairing goes on the bike, you have to do quite a lot of cutting and fettling really. So it's getting your, your reference points to where this bolts onto the frame. I'll show you in a moment the lugs I've made up. I put this on when I take it off, it just holds it together because they're quite delicate. This is only a cheap race fairing. When you pick up your fairing, it won't have a screen. You have to get that. You have to drill perspex and it's not easy. You have to be a little bit careful with that. But we had to scallop this out and we had to get the cutaways right because that'd be on your knees. So when the fairing fits on the bike, we have one each side of these lower brackets. You make all this yourself. When you get the fairing, you, you hold bits of wood underneath it and you get someone to help you. And you just have to get your reference points really. So you make your brackets up, so you've got one each side of these. Now the back one is a long tube that runs through. So we put a plate on here, run the tube right through and it's brazed. And this is the outer bracket that fits into the back of the fairing. You have to make sure it's not on top of the carburetors, but it works. So that's your mount there. See so these two mounts and your top one comes off the top part of the frame just below the headstock and you have a bracket underneath you have a channel section that's welded and it's it has four holes and they're drilled captive nuts the other side so you can put your allen screws through and this is your main support for your front your fairing and you can mount on here as I have you've got your taco here your instrument which you're only going to have your electronic ignition switch and indicator light and you could just make a piece of aluminium like I've done here. That, like I say, is, is all the original part of the bike. You can see where I've cut it all down. You're just mimicking as much as you can of something, you know, and trying to use all your bits that you've got, which you've taken off, rather than spend lots of money. So that's something I want to show you on the fairing, and I was very lucky here. I was up at Mallory Park, and I managed to get John McGuinness to sign the fairing. And on this side, Tommy Robb. And uh, yeah, to have that does mean something. Here you see a different bike, Honda 175, CB 175. That's what it was originally. Another bike that was, it laid in someone's garden, believe it or not, for quite some time. They ended up in someone's shed and I was told, did I want it? So I thought, built the first one, free donor bike. That came to me and I thought, I'll build this one as well. Built this really for my son to ride with me because he has the interest in bikes and he wanted to be part of it. I had this dream of father and son out on the track together, which we've done. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm just going to start it, fuel on, I'll give it choke, pull the clutch in, in second gear, with the clutch in obviously, and then I dump the clutch, then she should fire up. Just check, I've got the fuel on. It's in second gear already, put the power on, clutch in, button down. <laughs> On the front mud guard, you, you can see here, there's a sticker. Now this is Murray's Motorcycles, and it's, uh, may the luck of the fairies ride with you. When you go to the Isle of Man, just outside Douglas, you go over this stone bridge. And it's good luck to give the fairies something, they will look after you. It's what people do. So when you go to the Isle of Man, find this bridge, put some money in the water, and you'll stay on the Isle of Man or if you're racing. Hopefully, someone will be looking out for you. What I want to try and do is put across to people that are like this, have a go, build something. You can do something like this and you haven't got to spend lots of money. The first thing to look at is make sure the engine's okay don't get yourself a bike and think i'll build the bike up i'll get all the frame done not knowing what the engine's like because you could take it apart and it'd be an absolute load of rubbish and then you've got to find another engine then can you afford it so i would say to anyone try and pick up something that turns over that's all together preferably a runner then you can strip your engine down and go through it you know and just check out make sure everything's there but maybe just take it apart loosely and just have a quick look Concentrate on one thing at a time. Don't try and do everything in one go. If you're working on the cycle parts, you're gonna find it too much doing all the other parts at the same time. Start with one part of the bike. Do the frame, get your forks in, get your wheels in, get a rolling chassis. You know your engine is okay, you've had a pre-look, then concentrate on that later. When you build something like this, you build it for a reason. My reason was to originally to build something and take it to the Isle of Man. I wanna to say to all of you out there, if you have a wanting to do something like this, do it. I haven't spent a lot of money really on this. Over a period of time, you can spread it out. But if you get something that is a runner, then you've got something to work. You've got a benchmark. You've got something to start with. I probably not spent any more than two and a half thousand pounds on that. It's got me to the Isle of Man several times, Mallory Park. I've rubbed shoulders with people I've never normally seen in life. You know, I've been out there past masters. I once met a marshal and had a few beers and he said you can go out with them later on i'll put a sticker on your bike and i rode out with uh, wayne gardner and there was john mcginnis out there by doing this it's surprising how many doors were open you know you get the opportunity to do things that you never thought possible and you'll meet people along the way so yeah do it build it but don't rush it if you enjoy our videos please subscribe to our youtube channel click the notifications bell and give the video a like we value every one of our subscribers, and your support really does help us make more videos. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see more of our videos that we think you'll like. Thank you for supporting the Classic Motorcycle Channel.